Good afternoon, my conscious co-creators. Welcome to another edition of the Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity. I am very, very pleased that you are here with me today, either on talkradio.nyc or on our Facebook live stream. You can always catch us 12 noon Eastern time to 1 p.m. on uh, facebook.com slash talkradio.nyc. Ta, my brother, I see you watching there. Always wonderful to have you tuning in. And I'm going to dedicate this show to you and your your uh, wonderful significant other, Cole, because uh, you guys are leaving real soon on your uh, year-long journey. I look forward to uh, watching you guys as you traverse through the world uh, over the next year. It'll be interesting to see. So... Welcome, everybody. Let's get started. We have a wonderful guest in returning guest in studio today. Uh, and uh, let's uh, get started as usual with our quotes of the day from the universe and from Abraham. Let's see what the universe and Abraham have in store for us today. First, from the universe. For the earnest student, taking responsibility means never forgetting to have fun. Seriously, the universe. Ah, uh, we love our quotes from Mike Dooley in the universe. Um, uh, and very apropos for today's guest, um, talking about, you know, yes, taking responsibility is important, but let's not forget to have fun in the process. And this is actually something that came up to me just this past Friday night at a ceremony where um, I, I was out in Brooklyn with with a group of people, with a group I hadn't uh, done work with before. And uh, it's you traditionally, you know, sort of quiet, um, introspective, uh, you know, self-reflective kind of work. But, th like, during the middle of the ceremony, people started getting a little rowdy and shouting out and laughing and having fun. And I was just kind of laughing to myself. It was very entertaining for me. And I was just thinking to myself, oh, I'm not going to really do any deep work tonight like I thought I was. I'm just going to have fun. And then I realized having fun can be deep work, too. And oftentimes we think that, like, to do the deep inner work, we have to be serious and, you know, focused. And we have to dig up all these painful memories and things like that. But sometimes just cutting loose, sometimes just, uh, you know, being in the moment and, 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 and really just allowing ourselves to be free like children once again, allowing ourselves to play is sometimes the most important thing we can do. You know, I've heard it uh, said that researchers look and like that's how our brain creates new connections by playing. And that's why it's so important for children to play. Children learn while playing. And I think that's something we tend to forget when, as we become adults that like we forget that playing, like having fun is learning. So, yes, uh, if we're going to be an earnest student, you know, having fun is so important. Does this mean that we don't work hard? Does this mean that we don't show up and be as present as we can? No, of course not. Absolutely, we, we show up and be present. But having fun in the process not only makes the process that much more enjoyable, but it act, we actually get it in our nervous system. We actually feel it in our body so much more. So this is a wonderful quote today and something that I think it's, it's a reminder I always need. And, and I think it's a reminder for us all that, you know, to always have fun while we're learning because, you know, having fun can actually be very deep, serious work. So a wonderful quote from the universe. Let's see what Abraham has in store for us today. Trust that they're making their lives work in the way that they're making their lives work. And just teach through the power of your example. Abraham. Ah. Now you see Abraham here. I think Abraham here is also talking about kids and adults too. 
but it's about really trusting that people are doing whatever they need to do, whether they're 3, 30, or 90 years old, that we're all doing the best that we can and whatever we really need to do to get by in life, to survive, to thrive, you know, what, what, what we think that we need the most. And that really we can't change anybody else. We all have this tendency of like thinking, oh, if I can only help this person change, only if I can make them change, it could be better, they could be having so much more, they could be doing this, they could be doing that. And it's like, you can't force anybody to change. We can inspire others. And by living as an example of how to be different, of how to show up better in our lives, then we can help people to change. But that's not forcing people to change. That's not making somebody change. It's we have to just stand in our authenticity. We have to stand up and, and, and just show up better for ourselves in our own life and trust that that example will inspire others and help others and that people will see that and then they will take that and use that and model that behavior. Because ultimately, the only change we can make is in ourselves. We cannot make a change in anybody else. It's always up to that individual to make their own change. And it's always up to us to make our own change. So let's trust in life. Let's trust in the universe. Trust in whatever word you want to use that things are actually going along as best as they can, given all the circumstances around us. And yes, I know there are some horrible things that have happened or are going on in the world. There are a lot of people who are going through very painful moments and, and very difficult times between natural disasters and man-made disasters. Look, it, it, it has always been that way. But believe it or not, even with all this mishigas, even with all this craziness that we're experiencing, things are still better today than they have ever been before in our history, in our recorded history. You know, we forget that, like, people are living longer than they ever have before. There are actually less people involved in conflicts around the world than there has ever been before. That, you know, things... Are, are, are you know the standard of living is higher than it's ev ever been before less people are in poverty than have ever been before does this mean that there are not people in poverty no not at all this we still got a ways to go it's just you know when we look at our yardstick and how we measure things we have a tendency to use a very short stick because we're only comparing today to yesterday but if we compare today to 500 years ago you know how much cleaner things are how many more children are surviving childbirth how many more women are surviving childbirth you know how, how many more people are educated than any before how much more access there is to information i mean especially now with the internet i mean god if you just have a cell phone you have literally a whole world of information at your fingertips so things actually are better than they've been before it's just we're much more aware of all of the craziness in the world than we've ever been before because before we used to be confined to like our little village and occasionally we'd get reports when somebody would ride in from town and tell us about what happened but we didn't really know what was going on on the other side of the world now we know in seconds what's going on in the other side of the world so it, it, it's it's just a it just we have so much more access so it, it feels like things are just horrible compared to the way before they actually are not if you look at the real numbers look at what's really going on things are amazing compared to before does not mean that there aren't difficult things to deal with does not mean that there's still not people suffering does not mean that there's still not a lot we can do to improve things it's just about perspective and it's about taking a different perspective and understanding again if we can trust that things are really going the best that they can then the the only work we need to do not the only work but the most important work we need to do is to be the best example we can be for 
those people in our lives. And if we can be a better example for just those handful of people, the couple of dozen people, whoever we happen to touch, how small or how large our reach is, if we can touch their lives a little bit, and then they start to live their lives a little better, and then they start touching other people, that's the way we change the world. That's the way things unfold. That's the way we grow, and things become even more amazing. Wow. Two wonderful quotes. Oh, big shout out to Lee, Luke, Madhavi. Oh, thank you all for tuning in on the Facebook live stream. And again, for anyone listening through talkradio.nyc, if you want to see the video, just go to facebook.com slash talkradio.nyc. Wonderful to see you all. Thank you, Ta. I know, brother. I know you, you resonate with all this stuff. So two wonderful quotes. I hope you enjoyed them. And uh, we'll have two new quotes for you next week. And now, as I flip around the camera, oops, and show you our guest for the day in studio. Yes, you do not have to look at me all hour long. Isn't that wonderful? It is my pleasure to welcome back to the show Ellen Gottlieb, who is the founder of Enlightened Parenting. Ellen uh, began to study mindful parenting more than 12 years ago when she wanted to shift her own pra parenting practices. She realized that her two daughters, back then they were 8 and 10, were unhappy and anxious, and she knew that there had to be a better way. Ellen, being an attorney by trade and practiced law as a litigator um, and a mediator for more than 30 years, used this training to enhance her communication and negotiating skills. Mindful parenting is her passion and has resulted in the creation of her own thriving coaching practice, helping parents all over the New York area, right, Ellen? And the country. And around the country. And she was personally trained uh, for more than a decade by Dr. Shafali uh, Sabari. Sabari, thank you, who is a world renowned parenting expert and who's also endorsed by Oprah Winfrey. And so uh, we welcome you back to the Conscious Consult now. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here and to be back with you and your wonderful audience. Oh, thank, so thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, I know uh, last time we had you here earlier in the year, we had a little bit of technical difficulties and the recording wasn't so good. So decided to have you back and thought, you know, this is a good time of year to have you back, right? It's the back to school season. Kids are going back to school and that brings up a whole bunch of issues, doesn't it? It does. But it's always a good time to be a conscious parent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, ooh, a couple of more people joined us. Welcome, Dana and Bravish on the Facebook live stream. Good to see you guys. Um, so, uh, as as I mentioned just in your introduction, uh, you know, you had you kind of got into this conscious parenting because of uh, your own needs with your own kids. That's correct. Uh, so, uh, you know, most parents, uh, th their kids are a little anxious. They, they like, just kind of react. What kind of, and, and we just got, like, a minute before we go to break, what kind of got you to say, like, there's got to be a better way? Like, like you know, I, I can't just do what I've been doing for the last 10 years. It's a great question. I knew that there was something that I didn't know. So I didn't know what I didn't know, and I was right. going to find out. I also knew that I was simply doing what was done to me, that there was a legacy of mindlessness, lots of love, but lots of mindlessness. Mm. And here I was recreating that in reactions, in blame and criticism, in a desire for an outcome and for control. And I simply decided that there must be another parenting paradigm, and I sought it. And mm. I was fortunate over the years to make some shifts how, how long did it take you to find sort of this idea of ca conscious parenting? You know, it was an evolution like everything in life. Yeah. It's, it's truly an evolution. It took some time, and I was fortunate to meet this wonderful mentor and then to find some of the right books to read. And I've actually done hundreds and hundreds of hours of training wow. and now working with other parents, and I'm growing in it all the time. Wonderful. And it is my passion because when I see a shift in a family yeah. where a child goes from a state of anxiety to tranquility, Nothing makes me happier. Right. And then you know you're breaking that cycle, right? Exactly. It's, it's all about breaking it's, it's like that generational cycle that's been going on for years is now 
dissolved. And All I right. must tell you that your, your uh, quotes were perfect. <laughs> They're always so apropos for my guests. Okay, we're going to go out for our first commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to start talking about uh, what's the mindful, conscious way to deal with your children's anxiety going back to school and the things they have to deal with these days. And we're going to touch upon a whole bunch of topics today. So please stay tuned. You're listening to The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, and we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 